Wyoming. This is the stronghold for giant herds of pronghorn that migrate 100 miles. Elk range from the mountains to the deserts. And the mule deer make some of the longest migrations in all of North America. But thousands of animals undertake these amazing journeys only to get stuck along this road. Interstate 80 acts like a 400 mile barrier for migratory wildlife. It's the open road for us, but not for them. To the animals, it's one giant roadblock. I'm a writer and a filmmaker, and I work with the Wyoming biologists that track big game migrations. In 2012, they used GPS to document the longest mule deer migration corridor in the United States, up to 150 miles from the Hoback Basin to the Red Desert. But at the southern end of this corridor, the biologists noticed that thousands of mule deer abruptly stopped their migration at Interstate 80. The road also interrupts elk and pronghorn movements, cutting off access to habitat. If we could help wildlife get across Interstate 80, how much better would it be for the animals and for people? It's one thing to look at migration data on the map. It's another to see these places up close and personal. That's why my friend Leon and I went on an Interstate 80 road trip to visit with migration experts and learn the stories behind the data. And along the way, we set up wildlife cameras so the pronghorn and deer can show us what's really going on through their eyes. As we set out on our journey, the animals are making theirs. Right now, it's mid-October, and this is the time of year when animals are moving down from the mountains and coming into this desert, where they'll group up along Interstate 80. To survive in this harsh landscape of mountains and plains, they need to migrate, sometimes hundreds of miles, to avoid snow or to find forage. There's a whole history of why this area is really important to people and animals. Southern Wyoming really ties this country together. It's a desert gap surrounded by higher mountains, a low point on the Continental Divide. This geography is the main reason why big game animals and Native American hunters have moved through this area for thousands of years. About 200 years ago, fur trappers came through Shoshone land. Then the army came, the railroad in 1868, and the Lincoln Highway in 1913. This route was the obvious place to build the interstate. In 1970, the last section of Interstate 80 in Wyoming was completed. The road now sees about 13,000 vehicles a day. That's about one every nine seconds. Unfortunately, the east-west migration of people blockaded the unseen north-south migration of wildlife. It was unintentional, but we disrupted the connectivity of the habitat. I'm here with biologist Hank Henry, who did a lot of mule deer research in this area back in the 1970s. So what was it like to see the mule deer migrating across at that time? There were quite a few of them. It was real historic. And we documented over a thousand were coming across this stretch of road there at Dana Ridge. We were averaging, oh, 50 to 60 deer deaths per year. And the highway was a lot of times iced over and cars couldn't stop. So it wasn't pretty. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department, before the highway was even built, recommended tunnels that were 10 foot by 10 foot and 100 yards long because they realized it was a heavy deer migration area. The deer were reluctant to use those. An exclusion fence eight feet high was put in along the both sides of the highway. However, they went around the end of the fence and that was a big problem right there. I would get up every so often in the night, patrol the fence with spotlights. If I see deer, I would shoot Roman candles at them to move them back. I couldn't patrol it 24 hours a day, and we had 33 deer killed within the fence, but they eventually started using the machinery underpass. That's the one that most of all the deer were migrating through. And then they could look up to see the sky. It was a real quick through and out the whole 400 mile stretch in, of the highway in Wyoming, they're some of the only structures that exist. If you're gonna keep the deer off the road, you have gotta allow them a solution to migrate. 
Since the late 70s when Hank Henry did this work, there's been a renaissance in wildlife tracking and mapping. Researchers have now documented many more migrations north and south, and many day-to-day -day movements, nearly all of which come to the interstate and stop. Through decades of data, animals show us that I-80 is a massive barricade. It adds unnecessary challenges to their survival, ultimately making herds less resilient. Most of the time, the traffic is so heavy that animals don't even try to cross. Up to six lanes of travel, as well as the railroad tracks, make a nearly impassable barrier for wildlife. That means they can't move to the right habitat at the right times, which is their most important adaptation. To hear about that, I visited Mark Zorns, the wildlife coordinator with the Wyoming Game and Fish Department in Green River. Pronghorn are avoiding that snow by drifting in a direction where the conditions are better. Towards Flaming Gorge Reservoir, there's a rain shadow effect there, less snow, less harsh conditions. But unfortunately, in this case, they hit Interstate 80, which kind of prevents them from making that migration. Mark told me about an event in 2017 that was a nightmare version of what Hank Henry saw 40 years ago. So it was a bad winter. Um, we had uh, several pronghorn enter this right away. Foggy morning, we had a semi-truck eastbound that was traveling too fast for conditions. The, the gentleman um, hit about 25 pronghorn and, and killed all of those animals. And believe me, those are really bad days to be a wildlife biologist, we'd get to deal with either the dead animals or, the, or, or actually put down those that are injured. So what are some of the solutions that would work for crossing on Interstate 80? Pronghorn do not like using our deer underpasses. They don't like using little tunnels. They, they want to be able to see, they want it to be open and expansive. And unfortunately for pronghorn, the, the solution is an overpass, which are much more expensive to build, but ultimately, I mean, if that's what we're trying to achieve, we need to find the money and, and, and do the right thing. Every year, there are a couple hundred wildlife vehicle collisions on I-80 and 6,000 across the state of Wyoming. These accidents can be deadly for people and they cost upwards of 50 million in damage every year. So we're already paying for this situation big time. The good news is that Wyoming has already found solutions that work remarkably well. And to hear about that, we came to Pinedale to meet Pete Halston, a YDOT engineer who helped lead the Trapper's Point project. So what was this stretch of road like before this was built? Well, every year, spring and fall, the animals migrate through here. So it was like running a gauntlet with all the traffic. There's a lot of risk for motorists, a lot of risk for the animals. So. We decided to build a, a series of grade separated crossings for the animals. Six underpasses, two overpasses, and about 12 miles of the tall fence. When we first started seeing the animals come across and seeing the film of the big groups, it was really exciting. In the first three years, there were 60,000 safe wildlife crossings. We reduced mule deer collisions by about 79% and pronghorn collisions dropped to zero. It was every bit as much about connectivity as it was about the money. The Trapper's Point project was about $9.7 million, but we think it would pay for itself over the first 10 years because each Animal vehicle collision cost about $11,000 in property damage, and then every deer that didn't get hit was worth about $3,000 to the state. We learned a lot of things from this project. We needed to manage both daily movements and migration kind of issues. You really need all the tools in the toolbox, the fence, the overpasses, the underpasses to address the issues that you have. And then what's really going to help us on future projects and especially on I-80 is those relationships that we've developed with the biologists and the NGOs. Successful projects involve combined efforts of the public, Wyoming Department of Transportation, Wyoming Game and Fish, and federal agencies, and also the private landowners that have stewarded migration corridors for generations. Wildlife crossings really work. 
and they are popular with motorists and hunting groups like the Muley Fanatic Foundation. They recently supported a new state law to create a license plate that funds wildlife connectivity projects. We hear a lot from Wyoming folks who want to see more crossings, especially on I-80. I think as a state, we'll chip away at it and make it happen. Interstate 80 remains the single biggest barrier and the hardest to fix. But then I think about all the amazing things that people have done here. It only took two years to build the railroad across all of Wyoming. And that was in the 1860s. If we could do that then, certainly we can fix these wildlife issues today. We've already put in successful crossings at Trappers Point, Nugget Canyon, and Bags, and we're starting to look at it all across the state. Let's learn from what we've done and also take inspiration from others. Canada has done this in Banff National Park, and so has the state of Washington. On Interstate 80, Nevada has built some amazing structures, and Utah has a brand new wildlife overpass completed in 2019. But here in Wyoming, crossings could benefit tens of thousands of animals and reconnect some of the longest migrations that are left in the United States. By working together, we can build crossing structures that will keep Wyoming wild long into the future.